Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll give our attention again to Jesus' words to his disciples on the night he was betrayed. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the gospel of our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, in John's gospel, when Jesus begins a sentence with, I am, he's about to paint a self-portrait to put your soul at rest. I think you're familiar with at least a few of them. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We heard another one of them last Sunday. I am the good shepherd. When, when Jesus says, I he is distinguishing himself from everything else that exists. He is the sole source of the blessings that are depicted in that picture. And when Jesus says, am, he is promising you his constancy, that he will always provide the blessing that the picture depicts. It's simply who Jesus is. And now we have another one today. I am the vine. Jesus paints us into this picture too. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. I'm more familiar with fruit trees than grapevines, so that's what I see. Jesus is the trunk, Christians are the branches, and the fruit is everything that comes out of us that demonstrates our connection to Jesus. So note, there's an obvious order here. Fruit doesn't produce the vine. The vine produces the fruit. Which is to say that God isn't like a vending machine where you put in your obedience like quarters, and once you've paid the price, out pops salvation. No, he's like a tree, and Christians are the branches. Your life with God comes from the, the vine, from Jesus, and what he gives to you, not from the fruit, from what you do for him. Which makes this a really helpful passage to bring up with somebody who, who thinks that Christianity is about earning your own relationship with God. Your obedience does not establish your relationship with God. Your relationship with God, that produces your obedience and, and your life. It's also a helpful passage to bring up when, when you're talking to somebody who thinks that free forgiveness means that, that you should live it doesn't matter how you live. No, if, if you're connected to Jesus, a life lived to the glory of God will be the result of that. As 
as surely as an apple tree bears apples in October, your life will be an evidence of your connection to God. A lack of fruit, Jesus says, is evidence of a dead branch. So we have the portrait of the vine and the branches and the fruit. It's, it's a masterful illustration of the relationship between God and the Christian and, and our lives. But it's kind of like looking at the Mona Lisa. The longer you look at it, the more you see. There's more to it than what first meets the eye. Think about who Jesus was talking to when he said this. His closest disciples. Think about when Jesus said it. This was late on a Thursday night en route to the Garden of Gethsemane for a rendezvous with Judas. So Jesus isn't talking to people who didn't want to serve him or who were trying to serve him for all the wrong reasons. These were people who were about to feel the weight of the world on their shoulders. And, and pretty soon they were going to start thinking that they weren't in a position to serve at all. The calendar was about to flip to Good Friday and Jesus was leaving. Well, of course, he, he rose from the dead after he died on the cross. But still, things changed. Forty days after Jesus rises from the dead, he ascends into heaven. He, he hands off the baton to Jesus' disciples. And they're not going to see him anymore. He tells them, you will be my witnesses. People aren't going to see me anymore, but they're going to see you. Jesus takes his work, he puts it into his disciples' hands, and he tells them, hey, this is not going to be easy. So before they feel the weight of the world on their shoulders and start thinking to themselves, I can't do this, Jesus paints a picture for them of a vine and branches and fruit. And then all over that picture, Jesus sprinkles the word, remain. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. Remain. Can you see why Jesus would say that to people who wanted to serve, but it would get hard and they would feel like they couldn't? I think that every Christian pastor can understand what he's saying. Because he's, he's following in the footsteps of Jesus' disciples. He's, spo he's supposed to serve as a voice for Jesus on earth. But people don't always listen like they should. And the pastor doesn't always speak like he should. And if he thinks about those things for, for too long, he's going to start to realize that he's in over his head. And the way it progresses... If you start thinking like you no longer can, uh, the, the next step in that is usually going to be that you no longer feel like even trying. And this isn't a pity party for pastors. This is the reality for every Christian as they walk in the footsteps of Jesus' disciples. The Christian mother Her kids don't always listen like they should. And she doesn't always parent as she should. The Christian teenager on the other side of the equation who, who really does have a desire to respect and obey, but a lot of the time it, it just doesn't happen and, and nobody else understands what he's going through. And most of the time he doesn't understand himself either. And it's not just parents and children and pastors. It's, it's any Christian of any age in, in any situation. They can feel that way from time to time or maybe all the time. That I want 
to live a life that brings glory of God. I want to show the one I belong to and the glory of his name. But it's too much. And I can't. And once you start feeling like you no longer can, it's usually only a matter of time until you no longer feel like trying. Am, am I being overly dramatic here, or do you know what this is like? If you, if you do want to understand what it's like, that probably means that you haven't given up and and you try to, to do better, to, to get it together and, and do better, and, and maybe that, that works for a day or a week, but then it's back to failure, and, and the pastor thinks to himself, if only I had better abilities, and, and the mom thinks to herself, if only I had better kids, and, and the teenager thinks to himself, if only I had better parents. And we start to think, if only Jesus would give me better circumstances, less stress, less opposition, less temptation, more money, better health, then I would be able to show everyone around me the power of Jesus in my life. Then these branches would be drooping under the weight of their fruit. If only Jesus would give me fill in your blank. Jesus was about to leave, and he could see those thoughts in the minds of his disciples before those thoughts even entered their minds. So he draws them a picture. I am the vine, you are the branches. I'm the vine, he tells them. Not your circumstances. Your circumstances do not dictate who you are. I'm the vine. I make you who you are. And for us, when following in those footsteps is more than we can handle, well, let's make sure we're looking at the right end of the branch. The fruit isn't what makes us who we are. It's the vine, which means it's, it's time to look up from everything that, that we can't do and how ill-equipped we are to do it. In order to show the, the power of God's grace, in order to show the one you belong to, you, you need to focus on the one you belong to and the power of his grace. You see why he sprinkles the word remain all over the picture? The, the Christian pastor looks at his workload and, and looks at his people and sees all the things that he can't do and all the things that he hasn't been doing, and it's just too much. But what does he see? when he looks at the picture. He sees that he's not the vine. Jesus is. And no matter how much sin and failure that pastor brings to his vocation, that doesn't change the fact that the good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep and his forgiveness never fails. And no matter what his weakness is, that doesn't stop Jesus from making his work a blessing. Or, or the Christian mother or the Christian teenager who look at each other and think, oh, look at what I have to work with. And then they each look in the mirror and they, and they think the same thing. But what do they see when they look at the picture? They see that Jesus doesn't look at them and groan. Jesus looks at them and he sees extensions of himself. 
people that he made his own by the price of his own blood, Jesus looks at them and he sees prime examples of the power of his grace. Jesus looks at you. A parent, the child, the widow, the sickly, the misfit, the nobody. And you bring him so much joy. And not only because of what he's done for you, but because of what he does through you. That he uses you to show his love to the world, no matter how much you stumble in doing that. After all, it's not the vine that bears the fruit. It's the branches. You're the one that Jesus chooses to show his love to the world. You know, that means that you and I play a bigger role in God's kingdom than we will ever fully realize on this side of heaven. Remember when Jesus said it. He's on his way to his cross, then comes his resurrection, then his ascension, and from that point on, people don't see Jesus anymore. Instead, they see Christians. You're the channel that Jesus uses to show his love to the world. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was, was showing God's love and bringing glory to the Father through his own mouth and his own hands. Now Jesus chooses to do that through your mouth and your hands. Just with this very simple picture, Jesus in injects life and purpose into lives that might otherwise seem hopeless and, and pointless. I'm the vine. You are the branches. You're here, Jesus says to you, so that people can see me. You're here so that people can know me. You're here so that people can have what you have, which is life with me. And then all over that picture, he sprinkles the word remain. So that we don't start to think that we can do it ourselves. So that we don't start to think that somehow we can live detached from him. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Remain in me, and you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Remain in me. You remain in me. When my words remain in you, remain in me, and my Father will answer your prayers and bless your work. This is to my Father's glory, Jesus says, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be mine. Amen.